Hello. How's it going? I'm Matt. I'm Danny. And this is Southern California Comics Weekly Comic Book uh, Video Review. And this is the part of the show where we prank someone. No. Are we, are we pranking somebody? We read your emails. What do we do? We, oh, we review comics. That's right. That's it. That's what Well, we, we don't do. review them. We talk about them. Yeah. Like, and we mention if we've actually read them or not. They kind of more like Mean Girls in High School sort of review it, them. This is like our, our video burn book. Yeah. Now we're number one for five more minutes. Uh, so let's talk about some ones, books. Uh, you want to go first? Um, I sure. Go first? Yeah, whatever. Speaking of number ones, you're welcome for that segue. It's actually all number ones for me. How about you? Mm, no. Point two. No. no. Mm. Uh, Mighty Avengers number one is out. Um, it's by Al Ewing and Greg Land. It's like a, a, a spin-off of Infinity, that crossover. It's like, a, it's like mostly non-white superheroes together on a superhero team, mm -hmm. so that's really cool. Yeah, except for Spider-Man. He's very white. Yeah. Uh, I read it. I liked it. Um, I kind of liked it most, more than most Avengers titles, just because it's kind of like... It's kind of like what New Avengers used to be, remember, with Luke Cage? Oh, yeah, yeah. And this is kind of more like a downplayed Heroes. It's kind of like Heroes for Hire, but they're Avengers. It's like Luke Cage... That Power Man, that new Power Man, mm -hmm. the non-Luke Cage version. <laughs> yeah. there's, a, there's a good joke with like a, a knockoff Spider-Man. Yeah, he's going to be in the comic for a few issues. But anyway. Really? Yeah. Sweet. Because <laughs> it's a, you don't know who he is. Um, but it's cool. It's more down to earth. Um, the only downside is that it's illustrated by Greg Land, but that can't last long, right? Usually. He's not on books for very long. Yeah. Um, I know it's like your ninth Avengers book, but you, know, you could probably sub it in for Spectacular Superior Avengers or whatever. Um, yeah, so check it out. It's good. Um, I don't have any number ones. Uh, the the, the villains months are technically number one. Speaking of a number one, hey look, it's Lobo. <laughs> what? No, just, it's Justice League 23.2. Uh, if you notice when I do this, the cover doesn't give you a headache. It's because it's a standard edition that's yeah. regular price. Yeah, we have non-3D editions for $2.99 plus the 3D editions. Get them while they're hot. Yeah. Um, this is rel tint relative. Repentant. This is important because it introduces... Relevant. There we go. Lord. Lobo. Um, Lobo. But you say, Matthew. Matthew, I don't know your middle name, Rios. I've heard of Lobo before, and you've seen this Lobo on the cover. Uh, however, DC has told us that the Lobo you know is actually an imposter Lobo, and there's a real Lobo you're about to meet for the first time. Oh, yeah. The one you've heard about, right? Yes. Or are there three of them or something? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Anyway, if you're a Lobo fan, or you uh, are not a fan of Lobo, I would check out Justice League 23.2, where you can read Lobo again for the first time. That Ever. sentence actually makes it makes sense to me now. Um, something you might actually want to read. Hey, you're perfect. Oh, man. Um, Brain Boy number one. Brain Boy. It's from Dark Horse Comics. The old Gold Key series? Is that what that is? Yeah. I don't know what that is. I guess it is. It is based off an old Dell Gold Key from the... The yeah, the people brought you Turok the Dinosaur Hunter, and Solar, Man of the Atom, yes. and Magnus Robot. And, and Tonto yeah. issues. Yeah, it's... I guess it's about psychic secret agents, Yeah, but different from mind management. So, mm -hmm. consider that. It's by Fred Van Lenty, who's always a good a good yeah. read. And it's illustrated by R.B. Silva, who's actually really good. Mm -hmm. He did those uh, Nick Spencer, Jimmy Olsen stories from a yeah, few years ago. Yeah, those are pretty cool. I, I like those a lot. He's a good artist. Really expressive. It's a really colorful comic. I, th I think you guys should check this out, yeah. even though I didn't. But you're shaking it out technically right now. Yeah. Okay. I thought it was worthy enough to tell you about it, so there's that. Okay. All right. Speaking of comic books, I'm running out of segues. It's the Riddler <laughs> with the comic that makes your head hurt. Um, you already know the story. Villains Month. Riddler. I like the Riddler in general. I think he's a cool guy. I like his hat. Um, just letting you know, this is the only 3D cover we have left in the store. The only one? Yeah. That's a, yeah, it's the last one. Well, we have like 10 copies of this, but we ran out mostly yesterday around 11. Yeah. Um, if you want to pick up a 3D cover, Riddler is your answer. We had tons of Jokers last weekend, and they went out on Saturday like that. It's by uh, Scott Snyder, Ray Fox, and an artist of some note. Yes. He draws comics. Um, it is... Jeremy Hall. Jeremy Howell. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, and it looks pretty music. That really hurts my ears. So don't leave it in your car, because it'll melt. Yeah. Um, For real, it'll melt. Yeah. Uh, new number one, Marvel Infinity 
spinoff, The Hunt. This is a mini series. Yeah, um, it's Matt Kent and Steven Sanders, which is which is a pretty good team. Yeah. I like Steven Sanders as art. Matt Kent does mind management. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. cool. This is this is like a I guess a contest of the champions type thing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, Matt Kent introduces a bunch of brand new superheroes. You know are gonna get smashed up hard. Yeah, it's kind of sweet though. And there's also a huge story reveal at the end of the issue. I didn't realize that's I don't think even in Infinity. This, this part? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, that's like pretty serious, right? Yeah, that is. That's a. This is a it has a major event at the end. Which tie-ins don't usually do, which is cool. Yeah. They usually they talk about like, oh, that thing happened over there. Let's talk about it some more. Yeah. Let's I don't want to show it from a different angle. No. Nah. Nah. All right. Here's a comic I really like. I don't care. It's SpongeBob comics. What's up? Uh, this is 24th issue SpongeBob comics. It's two years. SpongeBob. It's SpongeBob comics. It's actually under the uh, Bongo imprint. Oh, yeah, yeah. But in, in the previews, it's a separate thing that just says Spongebob. Um, I don't care. It's funny. I laugh out loud all the time when I read this. It's funny. It's just like the show. It's got different artists, kind of like Adventure Time does. Oh, yeah. You know, different people, different creators doing things. Um, and that's funny. And it, Spongebob's hilarious. It makes me laugh. And it's Spongebob $3. Is good. Yeah. It's got a gatefold poster every month. It's funny. Mr. Krabs is on a fake dollar. That's funny, because he likes money, and I like it. Spongebob. It's better than all of DC right now. I'll believe it. Okay. I'll actually believe it. Good. Um, one happy customer. Um, last one for me. Uh, like, another number one? You're yes. Good. good King, theme. Yeah. I just picked stuff that I wanted to talk about that seemed interesting. They're all number ones. Two. Maybe I just, I'm just like, lack attention span. Brag later. <laughs> King's Watch number one from Dynamite. Jeff Parker, Mark Laming. Mark Laming's a pretty good artist. I didn't realize that. Um, it's it's a team up comic between uh, 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 the Phantom. I assume that's Flash Gordon. Yes. And Mandrake the Magnificent. Yes. What was that cartoon they used to have? Ooh, ooh. Guardians of the Defenders of the Universe. Or, yeah, yeah, something like that. Champions of the whatever. It's that, but in comic form. Yeah. It's got a better name. Jeff Parker's fun. Um, the title the title is not that great. I don't think King's Watch. King's Watch. Makes it sound a little more highfalutin than it actually is, because it's got dinosaurs. Yeah. Which is pretty standard for most comics nowadays, but, you know, it's got the Phantom. Dinosaurs like, are the new Nazis in comics. Yeah, they are. You heard it here first. It's, it's fun, like, pulpy, mm -hmm. throwback stuff. It's, it's cool seeing a lot of the... Is that Dynamite doing that? Yeah, Dynamite. Yeah, Dynamite's getting a lot of uh, bigger uh, writers now. Yael Simone with... Um, Red Sonia. Red Sonia, and then they're doing a Red Sonia anthology with a lot of other names. Yeah. Kelly Sue DeConnick's doing stories yeah, there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, um, Mark Way is doing the Green Hornet for them. Yeah, so yeah. they're kind of picking up the real kind of your writers now, and you know, that's cool. So this book looks really good. If you like kind of pulpy yeah. stories, tales? Yarns? Yarns. Yeah. They're superhero comics, basically. Check it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not that's speaking you. of superhero comics, it's East to West. The trade paperback number one. Yeah, ten bucks. First five issues or six issues? Uh, let's say five. Either way, it's only ten dollars, so that's a pretty sweet deal. Yeah. That's part of Image's ten dollar first trade to get you hooked. You know, the first one's always free, and then, eh, more money. Yeah, Jonathan Hickman and Nick Dragata. Mm -hmm. But basically, Post the Western. Yeah, that's it. If that does not suit you, don't read this. But if you like that phrase, uh, Danny just said, yeah, check it out. Yeah. It's cool. I've read a little bit of it. Mm -hmm. I really like it. Yeah, it's an interesting world. It's nice to have a universe that's totally different than ours instead of post-apocalyptic semi, like, oh, they're still driving Priuses, sort of. Like, nope. This dude's riding like a monster, orangutan, horse thing. Uh, it's, so It's like the post-apocalypse happened like after the Civil War or something. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that theme is there. So, if you like what we said, you'll know you'll like this. If you don't, Spongebob comics. Uh, another segment? Let's take them somewhere. I forgot we're doing another segment. Okay. Let's do that. Hurry. We don't look unprofessional. Too late. Uh, all right, second segment time. Uh, we thought we'd go back to an old segment where we talked about books we really liked or had an impression on us. Well, sometimes you just want to talk about old stuff, you know? Yeah. Why not? Stuff we have available at the shop, conveniently. Ah, uh, see, it's two reasons. <laughs> uh, you want to go first? I'll go first. Um, yeah, I'll go first. Okay. Um, I picked the, the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Ooh. Alan Moore, Kevin O'Neill. What's um, it about? They made a bad movie about it, so pretend you haven't heard of that. Check. Because it's really bad. Yeah. Worse than bad, it's kind of boring. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, 
Alan Moore has created a, a story where every story takes place in the same universe. Like imagine imagine if all your all your known literary characters all existed at the same time. Okay. In the same in the same world. Oh well, that's right, like Dorian Gray or yeah, uh, yeah. Captain Nemo. So it's like it's like a, a Justice League of English lit class. Oh my gosh. And, and it's really fun. It's full of references to every book Alan Moore has ever read or heard of. That's cool. From the Victorian era. Yeah, this is the uh, omnibus edition. Fifty bucks for, I, th I believe, both the initial miniseries and the uh, black dossier. Okay. The black all dossier. The uh, kind of stuff. One shot. Yeah. All the know. all the DC stuff. Because I know it's doing like mini like years yeah. like nineteen sixty nine and two thousand yeah. whatever. Al Alan Moore quit DC like forever. What? At oh. all. <laughs> and now all that stuff comes out here through Top Shelf. That's right, Top Shelf. Yeah. So volume volume three of League is uh like takes place in the 20th century and that's yeah. pretty crazy mm -hmm. it's pretty crazy and they just came out with a, a one-shot graphic novel about just about nemo yeah yeah they did that was cool yeah and we talked about it it's really cool it's fun stuff yeah it, like even though even though it's about about literary characters and you know but by a well-read guy it's actually a lot of fun mm -hmm. to read yeah he takes it puts it in the way you want it kind of and not the boring way you think it'll be done what's that sound that's uh, the shop closing up, basically. It's eating us. Yes. Uh, I picked American Splendor. These are just the Vertigo titles because American Splendors are hard to find. Yeah. Um, they're not, I don't think, some are in print, but they're, no, they're hard to find. Um, anyway, if you don't know, uh, Harvey P. Carr from uh, Cleveland, uh, curmudgeon grumpy guy, um, got into comics one day. Yeah, he just wanted to start making comics. So yeah. he started making comics about his life. Everyday life, getting bread at the store, having a flat tire. Listening to jazz records. Yeah. Um, but it gets, like, unintentionally very kind of... Uh, about the human condition and society and stuff. Um, almost like you read a poem in class and you go, what's it about? And the teacher goes, whatever you want it to be. Sometimes. But you kind of get that vibe here, too, where it's almost like you're reading a poem in comic form or you're almost watching a boring piece of jazz, but that's really good. Um, if you've seen the movie, it's pretty sweet, too. Um, all yeah. that stuff was adapted from the books. Um, but because we don't have those, I'm showing the Vertigo series they did. I think it was 12 issues. Yeah, around the time the movie came out. Yeah. They started putting out, Vertigo started putting out his stuff. Mm -hmm. A lot of different guys. Gilbert Hernandez, Darwin Cook, uh, David Lapham. Oh. Stuff for here. Yeah, but it's, it's always Harvey P. Carr writing and a different artist mm -hmm. coming in. Like, back in the day, it was R. Crumb. Yeah, R. Crumb and all those other kind of underground comics guys. Yeah. Um, but I love it. Um, I was just telling Danny, my favorite way to read this is if it's raining, I'm eating cold pizza and listening to jazz. But it never rains in San Diego, so I haven't read these in a long time. <laughs> so I'll just turn the shower on and read it. But yeah, if you're just kind of down for kind of quieter books, i check these out. I like them. Man, they're pretty cheap, too. Like, what? They're free. They're free. What? I know. I'm going to take these. You want to take that? Yeah. That's not free, but you can take it. That's <laughs> called stealing. Uh, all right. I guess that's it. Um, that's it. That's all we got. Yeah. Tune in next week. Same Matt time. Same Danny channel. Well, it's actually the SoCal Comics channel. Yeah. Follow the shop on Twitter, SoCal Comics. Facebook. Facebook. So We're on Facebook. Uh, Twitter. I said Twitter. Facebook. The internet. YouTube. Friendster. Don't waste your time. Uh, we'll see you next week. See you. I'm going to try and be funny next week. Me too. Yeah. Try. I mean, not really hard. <laughs> <laughs> See you. See you later.